Welcome to the North Cities YouTube channel. We hope you enjoy today's message. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It is so good to be here. I was telling the first service, I've been so excited about today. I couldn't hardly sleep last night. I kept getting up just about every hour and just anxious to get here, kind of like a kid going to Six Flags or something. I'm just anxious to be here, be with God's people and God's presence and, and bask in the glory of the Lord and worship Him, exalt Him. I was telling the first service, I, my wife and I are on this walking program. I, well, I'm a... I'm, a, I'm participating in a walking program that she's created for us. And uh, we were walking our neighborhood yesterday, and uh, there was an elderly man in his front yard. And you could tell he was just waiting for someone to come by that he could talk to. He just wanted to talk to somebody. And so as I passed by, he said, how are you? I said, I'm doing great. I said, how are you? He said, I'm so happy. He said, if I was any happier, I'd have to sit on my hands to keep from clapping. Well, that's how happy I am this morning. <laughs> I'm happy. I am happy. Amen. It used to be an old song we sang in Sunday school. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I just got happy this morning. I've been clapping my hands all morning. I'm glad to be in the house of God with the people of God. And glad to be joining those of you online as well. Man, God is doing some marvelous things among us. As Brother Johnny mentioned, uh, people are being baptized, people receiving the Holy Ghost. Uh, just Brother Robbins mentioned to me that uh, the uh, brother, the doctor Friday that was baptized received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and several others uh, that have been baptized this, during this, m many of them, most of them actually, have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God is pouring out His Spirit, and God is doing some marvelous things here in North Cities and around the world, around the world. It's just a great time to be a part of the kingdom. Amen. I want to once again mention our deaf ministry. We have a tremendous deaf ministry, and I want to thank God. I want to thank God for it, but I also want to thank Sister Amanda Eiler for the wonderful job she does. This lady is amazing. I receive calls from pastors all over who tell me uh, what an amazing ministry this is and how wonderful Sister Amanda does doing this ministry. And I'm just so thankful for it. North Cities is interested in, in any avenue of which we can reach people. Any avenue. If it's through deaf ministry, if it's through grief share, if it's through celebrate recovery, if it's through end time Bible study, whatever way we can find that we can reach into people, Brother Bookman, we want to reach into people. Amen. And some of you do a great social media ministry. <laughs> and uh, keep it at that. I tell you what, this social media during this pandemic has revealed some things about some people I did not know. And I didn't want to know. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, help us, help us, help us. Put a governor on that thing. Uh, put a governor on that social media. I'm taking us this morning to Genesis chapter 35, verse 1 through 3, and then verses 9 through 15. And I'll be reading from there. This is, this is Jacob in his return to Bethel. His return to Bethel. In order to fully capture what's taking place here, it's, it's needful to go back to the 28th chapter of Genesis because here in the 28th chapter, we find where Jacob is coming from having deceived his father, receiving the inheritance. And as he has received the inheritance, he is fleeing the vengeance of his brother Esau, and he comes to a place, and he lights down and falls asleep. As he lays his head upon the stone as a pillow, he has a dream. And in the dream, he sees a ladder. And on this ladder, angels are descending and ascending. And when he, when he awakens, the Lord has given him a promise that he would keep him and that he'd watch over him 
and they would bring him back to this place. And so it's been 30 years since Jacob has been a wanderer. He's been all over. He's gone through all kinds of things. He's been scammed. He's been rooked. He's been He's had all kinds of things take place, but now he's coming back to Bethel, back to this place. And so we pick up the reading here. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. And let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way in which I went. And God, picking up verse 9, and God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and poured oil thereon, And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel, Bethel. So important to recognize what is taking place here. God is blessing Jacob once again because Jacob has understood that what is happening is he is coming back to Bethel. He's returning. He's coming home. And he finds what he's been searching for here. He finds a right relationship with God. He realized that Bethel is home, the place he's supposed to return to and the place where God's presence would be, where he would hear God's word and he would find this safe, secure relationship with God. My subject this morning is there is no place like home. No place like home. Jacob is returned home and it's here in this place that he has come back. It's been a 30-year journey. It's been a long time, but Jacob is returning. He's coming back to the place of which God's original voice originally spoke to him, and he heard God's voice. Now, I'll take just a moment. I know we've had some time to think about home uh, here lately, and uh, we've, had, we've been under the burden of the coronavirus pandemic for the past seven to eight weeks, and this has caused us to stay home a lot most of the time and and during this time we found out many things during this time home is a great place but many of us have learned that well what what we had heard that she doesn't work she's a stay-at-home mother is not true she does work and she's a stay-at-home mother that's a working job we also finding out that being a school teacher is not an easy task These homeschooling people are finding out that maybe some of these school teachers need a raise. (laughs) And all the school teachers said, amen. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) But I ran across a meme that uh, was on social media, mentioning social media, and it went like this. Day 14 of the quarantine, my wife took up gardening, but will not tell me what she's going to plant. (laughs) Uh oh. Ay, ay. Social media can reveal a lot of things. But home is a great place. Let me talk about the value of home. 
The value of home has meant so much to us, and it can be traced centuries back of how we've reflected on the value of home. There have been stories written through the centuries about how valuable home is. There have been songs that have been written, and then there's been real-life expressions about how valuable home is. In the classic movie, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's famous words were, there's no place like home. These were dream-awakening words that gave her new appreciation for home and for those who shared that home place. And then there's songs that have been written. I'm reluctant to give songs because when I hear somebody tell me of a song, the song gets in my head. You know, you just, you just start singing it inside your head. So I'm going to give you just a few seconds to, to digest the song. But John Denver wrote a song, and it was, It's Good to Be Back Home Again. Now go ahead and play it. I'll give you a few seconds to play that out. It's good to be back home again. Personally, I've experienced some times whenever I have arrived back home with a fresh appreciation of its value. A few years ago, I was invited to, to preach a camp meeting in Korea, and I accepted it. And uh, I, I went, went there and was there for an entire week in Korea, and I preached, had a great time, uh, enjoyed the culture, I enjoyed the food, the people treated me very, very well, and we had some dynamic services. It was an amazing time. And after that, I, my wife didn't go with me to Korea, but after the, after the week in Korea, we two met in Hawaii. And, uh, well, I know you feel sorry for me. But we, we met in Hawaii, and we had this leisure time, time of relaxation and time of good food. And you just, what can you say? The, the weather's perfect there, and, and the ocean, the sound of the waves and everything. And it, we had a great time. But I've been gone for two weeks. When I start home, when we're headed home, I, I'm starting to get excited about getting home. When I walked into the house, I, I'll never forget, I walked in and I thought, this is such a great place. And I looked at my wife. I said, I'm just glad to be home. And when I laid down in the bed that night, I said, I'm glad to be in my own bed. There's no bed that sleeps like this bed. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? There's no place like home. Amen. There's something about home. It's a great, great place to be. Jacob's journey speaks to us today. He was in search for the place of security, love, guidance, and he found it at Bethel, right there at home. He was called to return to Bethel, and he did. And it's there that he found restoration, renewal, and a reviving of the relationship he had with God. It was restored. Amen. We are in the same quest to find the peace, the security, the love, the help, the hope and the guidance and purpose and promise from God. And it's here at home that we find it. What is home in the New Testament? Well, I'm glad to be in this building, but this building is not really home. It's deeper than that. I'm glad to be, a, be in this at 502 Beltline, but it's deeper than that. What is home? It is God living inside of us and us submitting to his authority in our lives. That's what home is. In Acts chapter 2, whenever, whenever the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost was poured out, the, by, Jesus said, now I'm with you, but then I will be in you, in you. When God filled us with his spirit, he came to live in us. He came to house in us. We are the temple according to, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. He said, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile this temple, him will God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. You who hold the Holy Ghost inside of you have found that home, that place where God is housed, where God lives, where God dwells. He told, wrote to Colossians and he said, to whom he would make known the, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, 
the hope of glory. You are the house of God. You home, you are the home where God dwells. You're the place where God lives and God abides in you and I. And it's here, ladies and gentlemen, that there's no place like home. No place like home. You see, it took the prodigal, the 15th chapter and the 11th verse through the 32nd verse, we read of this young man, this young man who didn't realize the value of home. He gathered all that he could from his father, and he left home. I'm sure that when he left, he had some good times. I'm sure he had some times that he enjoyed. I'm sure he had some things that he really took part of that, that gave him a sense of satisfaction. But it was short-lived. It wasn't home. The Bible says that he came to himself, and when he came to himself, he was in a pig pen, and he realized, I need to go home. I need to return home. Perhaps I'm preaching to someone this morning that maybe you may have taken a day journey away, or maybe a week journey away, or maybe you've taken a month away from home where God dwells. Or maybe you've taken 30 years like Jacob. But I'm calling you this morning, there's no place like home. No place like home. I'm calling you to come home, to awaken your senses and say, God, I am coming home because it's here at this house, inside where God dwells, this return to Bethel, that you find everything that you're looking for. You find the security. You find peace. You find joy. You can't buy that at Walmart or Target, but I tell you, you can find it at God's house. Amen. Where God dwells, there's no place like home. No place. The prodigal realized and he came to himself and he said, I'm returning home. When he got home, he realized he had a renewed value for home. Renewed value. Because there's outside of home, it's not, it's not safe. It's not a safe place outside of home, away from God. Jacob realized after 30 years, I'm headed back to Bethel. I'm going home. I'm returning back to where I first fell in love with God. I'm trying returning back to where God first spoke to me. I'm returning back to where God gave that promise to me. And when he got ready to return, the Bible says he told, he told his whole household, put away all the false gods, put away all those idols, and let's get clean. Let's go back to home. Let's return back to Bethel. And it was back at Bethel he found what he'd been searching for. Let me speak not only to those who may have taken a journey away from the house. Let me talk to those who have stayed home. I want to give you an order. to stay home order. <laughs> it's not the one you've been living under. <laughs> it's not that one. I'm talking about stay home with God. Keep God at the center of everything. It's a stay home order. If you've come home, stay home. If you're here, stay here because this is the place where it's safe. This is the place where you're fed. This is the place where you find what you're searching for. It's here in the presence of God that you'll find it all. Amen. Would you just lift your voice and say, God, I thank you for this home. Thank you. There's no place like home. No place like home. Yes, there's no place like home. I know what it's like, and I've talked to many people who have, have taken a journey away from God, and I know the misery that comes. I know, I know that the Bible says that sin is enjoyed for a season. It has its season, but after the season is over, it's back to the reality that we can't manage life without God. We can't do it adequately. We're not, we, even though we consider ourselves to be independent in, in the Western world, we are not capable of managing life without God. We need God, and we find that in his presence we, when we stay in his presence. I'm telling the church of this hour, this is a stay-home moment. This is a time when you stay with God. 
Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't waver. Don't move. Don't, this is not a time to compromise. It's not a time to back up. It's time to dig in, pray, pray and seek God. It's time to read the word of the Lord. It's time to develop a deeper relationship with God. Just press in and say, God, there's no place like home. I'm staying here with you. I'm going to find security and safety here in your presence. Amen. Amen. Because it's no place like home, like home. I'm thankful for this place we're called home. The Apostle Paul realized the value of it. He said, for me to be present with you is, is to be, be here for you, but to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And as he's writing this, he realizes that this is a home. This is a vessel. This is a vessel where God dwells. God dwells inside of this vessel. God lives inside of here, and I'm going to keep him there. The next thing I want to talk about is to all of those who realize that even though we are at home and there's no place like home, we're headed to a final home, Brother Hamilton. We're headed to a final home. There's a home beyond this one. There's a home where there is no geographical boundaries that separate us. There's a home where there'll never be a pandemic that puts us at, at, at risk. There's a home where there will be no biases and prejudices. There's a home where there will be nothing but the power and the presence of God that radiates the atmosphere, that illuminates everything. There is a home where there will be no more sorrow and no more pain. Neither will there be any more death. The former things will be passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to remind us that when the trump of God will sound, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we that are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with him there's no place like home <laughs> oh, hallelujah. there's no place like home I'm headed home I'm moving in that direction as long as I stay at home with him now I'm going to arrive at home with him there and I'll hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. All things will be passed away. The former things will be passed away. All things will be new. What a joy it will be together in that place where there will be no ending of time. There'll be no more decaying of the body. There'll be no more loss of hair even. <laughs> We're, all things will be made whole and perfect. What a day that will be. I've come to declare to you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is no place like home. And as Jacob, in his pursuit of trying to fulfill life, after 30 years, makes his trek back to Bethel. He looks at his family and he says, family, get rid of all the idols. Get rid of all the false gods. We're going home. We're headed home. This morning, there's some people headed home. There's some people who may have taken a day journey or, or a week or a month or years, but they're headed home. Some of them have called me recently and said, Brother Hargrove, I feel God calling me back. I feel God drawing me back. I'm going to prophesy. There's a revival of prodigals. There's a revival of prodigals. Prodigals are coming home. God is calling them and pulling them. There's some Jacobs that's been out there away from Bethel, and they're coming back. They're on their way home because they realize there's no place like home. There's no place that feeds you like home. There's no food like the food at home. There's no people like the people that are at home. Amen. I will mention, at home, we don't always see eye to eye. <laughs> Now, I know your home's not that way, but, uh, but we're still at home, and we're still at family. We're still at home. Amen. 
There's some prodigals headed home. Not only are there some prodigals headed home, but I want to tell you this. There's some people of God that have anchored down. There's some people that have said, I'm digging in deeper. I'm going to re rededicate myself. I'm reconsecrating my prayer life. I'm reconsecrating my steadfastness. I've had people call me that said, Brother Hargrove, I know I've been slack. I haven't been coming and doing what I need to do, but I'm digging in. I'm going to do, I'm going to get, get where God wants me. I'm going to fulfill the purpose of God. There's some people that's getting determination that said, I'm staying. That I, that there's no place like home. There's no place like home. I'm coming home, Brother Hargrove, and I'm going to stay. I'm staying home. Amen. Because it's there that I'm safe. It's there that I'm secure. It's there that and I find the peace and the joy that I've been searching for. Amen. And then there are those of us that are rejoicing this morning with future anticipation because we know it's not far away, Brother Baxter. It's not far away, Brother Robbins, that the trump of God is going to sound. We're edging towards it any, not just any day. We know it's not today. We know that. <laughs> We know it's not today, but we do know we're getting closer and closer. And we know that soon the trump of God is going to sound and we're headed home. Yes. It's going to be worth it all. It will be worth every heartache, every tear, every bit of pain ever bit of discomfort it's going to be worth it to, when you arrive to that city and you see him face to face and you hear him say well done thou good and faithful servant you're going to rejoice and you're going to look back at not, in, in 2020 of May and you're going to say I thank God I anchored down and I can't get stayed home because there's no place like home amen there's no place like home oh would you lift your hands and declare it there's no place like home no place like home amen and I'm returning home prodigal I'm staying home dear child of God because I'm headed to a final home a final home heaven will be my home heaven will be my resting place heaven will be my final place I'm going to invite you to stand with me. And as we join in this chorus, I want to invite you to just lift your voice and declare, Lord, there's no place like home, and I'm staying home. There's no place like home, and I'm going to stay home because I'm headed to a final home. We hope that today's message blessed you. If it did, like this video and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. You can also connect with us at our website, northcities.org, or follow us on the social media channels listed below. God bless.